Welcome. I am super excited. This is Cosette M. White, the Money Coach. And this month, we are bringing experts, professionals from all walks of life into our community, into our tribe as we head into the Infinity Wealth Live Tour. And I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but we are hitting three cities. We're going to step into L.A. County. We'll be headed into Long Beach, California. Then we'll be headed back to my county, Ventura County, Oxnard. And then the last leg of the tour, I'm going to be hitting the Inland Empire. But I am super excited. So I want you guys to just remember to take some notes and continue this conversation that we're having, our money conversation with today's guest. And I'll tell you that in a minute. But just use the hashtag infinity wealth that way you can continue this conversation or write your comments or whatever out there in cyberland cyber world but just a little bit about me some of you may know and some of you may not know but i am a transformational speaker and coach and as a result of working for me what is it that you get my clients make sense of their money they learn to ditch the debt and develop a plan that will create the kind of wealth that leaves a security Uh, legacy for them and their family. Now listen, most of them, the negative money story is transformed from the limited beliefs to the sky's the limit. I help those that I coach through money coaching sessions, financial fitness boot camps, along with other numerous programs where I help my clients gain clarity and focus with their finances. Now, I'm not just talking so that you guys, you know, I'm patting myself on the back and giving kudos and all that stuff. But listen, when clients leave me, they are more confident, they're empowered, and they're inspired to make wealth a priority and to create tangible results that make a meaningful difference in their lives and also their families and really just anyone that they come in contact with. So I am on a movement, and it is called the Infinity Wealth movement, Infinity Wealth Circles movement. And I say wealth runs in circles. Now, my girlfriends and my guy friends, we all are of the same like-minded, uh, same like-minded individuals. So on the other end, I have none other than the T.L. James. Now listen, T.L. and I, we met, um, really how we connected you all is through the Power Network Conference. And if you haven't heard about the Power Network Conference, do some research. They are holding their next conference next July, July 2017, and you definitely want to be a part of Power Networking Conference. But anyway, we were both digital facilitators, and that is, excuse me, that is actually how we connected. So are you there, TL? Yes, I am. How are you doing? I am doing great. I am fine. I so appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule. I know you could have been doing a number of other things, assisting your clients, but you've taken time out of your busy day to network, to collaborate, and to just help me um, share with my tribe, my clients out there, um, a few tips about what it takes to... uh, to be successful in your business or whatever tip you choose to share with us. But before we jump into the questions, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, T.L. Okay. First of all, I want to say I'm honored to even be on here speaking with you. I've been following you for some time now. And so, um, like you said, like-minded people kind of gravitate towards each other. And I remember, I think it was either last year or the year before, I had it in my mind when I put my shingle up or actually stop playing the field of coaching but actually being a coach, I you kind of went across one of my pages. And I remember saying, I want to either speak with her or be on the stage with her or something want to be in her presence. And so when you connected with me, I was like, woo, law of attraction. It works. <laughs> Absolutely. I did. Yes. So I do want to say thank you so much because it's like this is the true testament of when you're really working hard and you have an open heart. And if you're following your dreams, things will come to your lap that you ask for. So thank you. You are so Um, welcome. That is so true what you said. So true. So true. So let me just ask you this question. I ask everyone this question because I never get the same response. 
And that question is, what does wealth mean to you? So what wealth means to me is um, a state of mind. Wealth is a state of mind and a state of purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, You and wealth, like you said, can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But wealth to me means a state of mind. You know, I can have five dollars in my pocket and if I have a wealthy state of mind, a healthy um, self-esteem, I can go in stores and say, oh, I just choose not to buy that because that's not something that I need as opposed to carrying on that lack mentality. And so it's a state of mind, even when you're talking about a lot of people who have lots of money, but they're sick, you know, Mm -hmm. so not only am I wealthy in health, I'm wealthy in the abundant, tangible things that I have. Um, I have wealth in my relationships. They're deep and they're meaningful. So it's always a state of mind and a state of purpose for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, thanks for sharing that. Now, let me ask you this. Now, when we talk about wealth, how does it impact your business and or your family? Well, my family looks at things differently. My, um, even how I manage my business looks at things um, is different. Um, because I have that wealthy state of mind, I'm not hungry for clients. And so I can actually kind of seek out and find ideal clients for me and, you know, where we're both a perfect fit and we're both going to get something out of the experience of being, you know, coach and client. And so it's been very, like, this is good. Every time I get off the phone, not only have I gotten a new experience from or learning something from my clients, they've got a wealth of experience and they just can't wait for the next call or they send any emails. And so that's kind of how it's helped me in my business because, you know, not all money is good money. You got and that so, right. Again, did you guys hear that? She said, not all money is good money. I'm so with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, and quick money is not always the best either because then that's part of that bad money. But when you have that wealth mentality, it's like, you know what, I'm not necessarily even competing with anybody because I can say something to someone and it can provoke their heart. And it could be someone who has a big old billboard behind me who's probably selling the same thing, but we have a connection because all of our journeys and all of our experiences are different. And so it just helps me, you know, even when I'm doing my business. Now with my my son, my poor baby, he thinks that, you know, law of attraction just works all the time, even with him buying Legos and things like that. But he does, I'm not... Um, projecting on that lack mentality you know you still need to earn and you still need to work and you still need to focus on what's important right but if it's important to you you will find a way and it will come to you absolutely you know, so. back to that again absolutely yes. now um tell the listeners what exactly what type of services um, or products do you offer? And well, let's start there. Tell us, tell the listeners what type of services you offer. Okay, so I am a certified business life coach, and I work with people who are either transitioning out of corporate America into their own businesses, or those who um, have part-time businesses and know that okay, you know what, things are about to transition, and I need to make this quote-unquote bling hobby a profitable economic engine. Um, another counterpart that I work with um, are authors, helping them understand their numbers behind their books to make sure that they're really spending their dollars and understanding their budgets and their unit, unit costs. Okay. And so in working with them, I work in five domains, which is mindset, people, process, systems, and profit. Okay. You know, I- and yes, mindset is probably 70 to 80 <laughs> percent. You know, when you're working with people in business and what you find out is to help offset some of the mindsets, especially in the beginning of business, if you work on those people, processes and systems, that helps you overcome some of the blocks that you might have in your mindset. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, What, uh, who would you say is your primary client or who would you say that you go after? Who's your target audience? My target audience, I like I said, of the ones who are converting out of corporate America, the ones who are empty nesters or lost, 
or those who feel like they have something a little bit more to offer than just a nine to five. Okay. Um, it, it can be anywhere from photographers or caterers. I've met some of the best caterers in corporate America. You know, when we have our little luncheons, when I was in corporate America, they would come in and we're talking about five course meals and it's like, you're a geologist? Why are you a geologist? <laughs> you used to be right. a cake boss or something like that. So those people who have that dream that's keeping them up at night, Right. Or, you know, that constant thing that's not letting them be 100% focused because it's like that burning desire that you should be more or you should do more. Those are my ideals. Absolutely. Now, um, I know that you were going to share some tips with uh, those that are on the call and those that may um, hear this recording a little later on. Um, now, a lot of my clients that I service, believe it or not, they are somewhat in that early phase of transitioning, either as a result of early retirement, you know, they set themselves up for uh, retiring in their early 50s, and then I have some that, you know, maybe they're not quite there, but let's talk to those individuals. What types of tips would you um, suggest or leave the audience today for making that transition? Okay. So one of the things that I tell um, my clients when they're still in the nine to five mode and they're ready to transition is when they're in meetings or when they're, you know, interacting with their employees, start to look at how the game is being played. Mm -hmm. um, start to look at, you know, things that are happening in your businesses, what they're uh, moral values, their core values, and all of those things are. And start writing out what you like and dislike about those because those are some of the things you're going to need when you build your business. And you're already there looking and actually seeing, okay, I don't like how they do this. I do like how they treat their employees. You know, you start looking at those things and start looking at yourself as a business. So when you see things happening, you know, write that down. I I don't want to do this, or I want to do more of that in my business. So when you do meet and make that transition and that jump, you have a basis to work with instead of starting off scratch because you're going to already be overwhelmed at the fact that you made the leap and nothing is going to come to mind, but you have, you know, you, you were ready. But right. just the fact that you made that leap, you, you you won't even be able to spell the word V, T-H-E, because it's like, oh, my God, I made this overwhelming step. So start writing those things down of what you like and what you don't like and what you want to do. Kind of daydream with that. Okay. Um, another thing I would like to tell people is understand what kind of lifestyle that you want when you leave your business. You know, do you need the big car? Um, do you want to work 60, 70 hours? Do you want to work 30 you know, what will make you happy to your core, not make you happy on the outside? And start looking at that and what that looks like. Because when you start your business, your business is supposed to support your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what that lifestyle looks like and you jump into a business, actually you're just going to trade one employer for another employer and then you're going to be tired. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you this question. When what... When, I'm going to say what or when do you really see um, individuals making a transition? Is it they, they come to the conclusion that maybe they're ready to um, somewhat retire and they're fed up with their employer and then they get this burning desire inside of them to say, hey, I'm ready to make this transition. I'm ready to leave this nine to five. I need to do something additional um, to get to a certain point because I'm not quite ready to retire, I want to do something, what, what, when do you typically see that or what, you know, at what stage I'm going to say in an individual's life, if that makes any sense? So I love to go to different networking events mm -hmm. um, and, and not necessarily business-owned networking events, but something where, you know, the employer is hosting it or um, I'm really big in oil and gas. So I always go to oil and gas events um, and talk to people. And, and not that, you know, that's all you have to do is talk to them and like, so what would you like to do? Not what do you do, but who makes you who you are and kind of get that burning desire inside of them while they're already in the nine to five. 
Got because it. one of the things that they need to do when you're in the nine to five, you're still going to need an investor to kind of see some of your, your dreams in your business. So you exactly. don't want to go full, you know, complete cold turkey because mm-hmm. the money that you did save up, yes, that's for your business, but you also need to live and survive. Exactly. And so I like to catch them in the beginning. Um, millennials are really great with that. You know, they're like, well, probably because they're still staying with their kid, their parents, but they're quick to say, oh, this is what I want to do. And, you know, they can juggle things and all of those. But I love to go to those events and talk to them. There's sometimes um, graduate events, um, alumni events at the school where you sit there and you kind of talk to them. Just something that they're already in the element of not thinking about their business because if it's a burning desire, it's going to always be on your mind. Right. And when you take them out of that element and ask them, what do you really want to do? You kind of see these little sparkles in their eyes. And they're like, you know, I really want to be a cupcake chef and I'm thinking about all of these things and you you know in a room with geologists and it's like the whole room disappears and it's about them and what they want to do in their dreams that's kind of where I look to get them because right. then it's a burning desire right all right sounds interesting very interesting and I'm sure that there are some listeners out there that would love to get in contact with you so can you share with our listeners um, how they can actually reach you, share your website, and then all of your social media um, handles, how can they reach you? Okay, so my website is um, www.coachtljames, all one word put together. Um, I have another website name, but for some reason, everybody kind of gravitates to that one, and that's easy. <laughs> um, okay. But coachtljames.com. Um, on Facebook, I am tljames.com. I am the um, certified business life coach. You probably also see me as an author um, and a publisher, but that's me, T.L. James. I'm the one that's laughing and, and doing a lot of funny things. I've probably got one picture out there that, that I was told that I look mean. I'm like, what? I was. I was hungry when I took the picture. Um, but um, I think all of my handles, even on LinkedIn, all of it is tljames.com. Okay. Okay. So you guys got it. She just left you with some vital information as to how you can get a hold of her. Um, TL, I just want to say thank you again for taking time out to um, share a few tips. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. She shared her website. She shared how you can actually get in contact with her. So if you are someone that is in that phase of transitioning from that nine to five into that entrepreneurial position, then I encourage you to seek out and see what it is that she does. Do some research on her. Um, And in the meantime, if you have any questions as it relates to your finances, your wealth, putting your business uh, strategies in place so that you are positioning yourself to profit, I encourage you to reserve your seat for the Infinity Wealth Live Tour. As I stated earlier, we will be in three cities. We will be in Long Beach, California, Oxnard, California, and we will finalize our tour in Riverside, California. For more information, all you have to do is hang out on my page at Cosette M. White. You can also find that information at my financial home. If you uh, want to head on over to Eventbrite, that is where you can purchase your tickets. All you need to do is search the word Infinity Wealth, and all the information will be there. I encourage you, and I want to say this because some of you may say this is a sales tip, and she's doing this to hype things up. Seating is limited. I will say that again. Seating is limited. There are only a certain amount of seats that we will be selling at each city that we're stopping in. So I advise you to jump on board right now while the seats are still available. In the meantime, I want you to have a fabulous day. I want you to go on out there. You know, my thing is stay financially fit. In the meantime, thanks again. And until we have our next tip of the day or of the week, you all have a fabulous one.